Today on Locked On Nationals, we are joined by Bobby Blanco from MassInSports.com. And on today's show, we will be discussing James Wood and also getting into much, much more with the Washington Nationals. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And I'm your host, Ryan Clary. You can catch me over on Twitter at RyanClary11 and as well as our show page at LO underscore Nationals. And of course, while you're at it, make sure to search up Locked On Nationals wherever you get your podcasts, including over on YouTube. Hit that subscriber button for me as well. Later on in today's show, well, first and foremost, Bobby Blanco from MassInSports.com. He is joining us today on Locked On Nationals. He is up in New York covering the Mets Nats series. So we'll get into some James Wood details about the Washington Nationals. But later on in the show, Bobby has some coverage coming up about the MLB draft because next week, this Sunday, I believe, Bobby, is the MLB draft. So we'll discuss that a little bit later on and get a little Nats Mets preview as Patrick Corbin takes the bump today. But... Dylan Cruz and Brady House, they're also at AAA Rochester now. Brady House just got the promotion a few days ago, so we'll have that for you guys and kind of get into some ETAs maybe. When will Dylan Cruz and Brady House make their Major League debut? I don't think it's that far away, but we'll see what Bobby thinks about that a little bit later on. So, Bobby, let's talk about it, man. James Wood, he is here. He is a big leaguer, and so far he's been killing it, but... Before that, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. And the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. So, as we were saying, Bobby, James Wood is here. The 21 year old kid has made an impact already. What have you known for, what have you seen so far through James Wood's first week? Yeah, he had a good one. I mean, in- all things considered, he showed everything that I think that you would want him to put on display on the field over his first eight games. Of course, it's only eight games, so you know, take it with a grain of salt. We need to see him do it over a course of 16 and then a month and then you know, hopefully over the course of a couple months and then to end the season and then all of next year uh, to really get a pretty decent sample size. But in eight games, I mean, you know, he's making contact. He's not really striking out as much. He's he's walked just the, a little under as much many times as he has struck out. So that's a good sign. Um, he's been pretty. He's not been fantastic, I don't think, in left field. But he hasn't been a liability. He's showed off that athleticism and some of that speed and arm strength that he has, which makes him a potential you know plus defender out there. So that's a good sign. But what's really stood out to me, man, is is the the exit velocities off of his bat. I mean. Some of the times when he makes contact, even for outs, which is an unfortunate part of it, but for outs, singles, his home run, like those exit velos are insane. He hit the ball three times last night at 108 miles per hour or higher. So that just goes to show, like, you know, the raw power he has, the raw skill, bat to ball skills, all that stuff. He is just a, you know, a phenom at the plate um, in the making right now. So, you know, you get. That all together, the eye, the exit velo, the contact, uh, the plus power, and then also the speed on the base pads. I mean, you're looking at maybe one of the better offensive tools um, that anyone's going to have in, in Major League Baseball. So been an impressive first week for for James so far. That's, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, you know what? You mentioned it yesterday. He had three of the five highest – Average exit velocity. Or average exit velocity. So he had three of the five highest exit velos of yesterday's game. I mean, as you said, he had 108.3, 109.1, and 109.5 off the bat in yesterday's game. I think one of the more impressive things so far with James Wood, Bobby, like I knew that his blade discipline has improved tremendously since 2023. I think we saw that down in Rochester. I mean, he wasn't striking out as much. He was taking a lot more walks. And when you are a top prospect, that is kind of one of those things that where it doesn't really translate right away to the majors. Like this is one of those things where it takes a little bit of a while to kind of get your feet wet in the big leagues because it is different. Like people don't really understand. I mean, I think most baseball fans do understand, but maybe for the casual fan, the jump from AAA to the majors is pretty damn big. 
I mean, especially going up against a pretty solid New York Mets staff like James Wood so far, he has been wildly impressive. I mean, I, I cannot go into any game now not expecting good things from him. And when you kind of talk about this, Bobby, at Mass and Sports, I mean, you guys follow the Orioles a lot. You yourself, you follow the Orioles a lot. When Jackson Holiday got called up, I thought he was going to be can't miss. This guy will never see the minor leagues again. I thought he was going to hit, hit the ground running. He struggled right away and then got sent down. And even since then, hasn't really been his same self. I was kind of expecting that from James Wood, and that just simply has not been the case whatsoever. James Wood, at this point in time, you were kind of touching on it. He screams that this guy is a phenom. I mean, he is a huge, massive prospect. He's going to be the face of this organization, in my opinion, for the next, hopefully, five, ten years. Yeah, the comparison to Jackson Holiday is interesting because, you know, look, you mentioned coming into this year and then Jackson getting his early promotion. Every, I think everyone was thinking what you were thinking, you know, that this guy's can't miss. This guy is going to be the rookie of the year easily. That's going to be back to back for the Orioles. They're going to get that extra pick and just keep adding more top prospects. Um, the list goes on and on. But, you know, yeah, he struggled mightily. And then he got hurt when he went back down to the minors and is still struggling to get. Now, I, I think he's getting closer to a, a level of production that is like mm -hmm. Jackson Holiday like. I know he's not hitting, I think, too much for power like he was, but he's, I think, walking a bunch. So that's still a good sign for him. But, you know, just last week, James Wood leapfrog Jackson Holiday in a lot of major publications, top 100 prospects as the number one overall prospect mm -hmm. in all of baseball. Um, and, and a lot of them said, you know, it's not so much what Jackson Holiday hasn't done. It's what James Wood is doing. It's, you know, combined mm -hmm. the struggle. I mean, yes, the struggles in the major leagues, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, played a factor for Jackson Holiday. Um, the injury, the time off obviously did. But, you know, James had an injury, too. He missed like four weeks with a hammy. Um, then the Nationals were extra cautious with. So it was pretty crazy that James Wood, you know, some publications had him, you know, just outside the top five to start the year. And then now we're in, you know, right before the All-Star break and he's leapfrogging this surefire thing, Jackson Holiday, as the top prospect in all of baseball. Not because of Jackson Holiday not playing well but because of how well James is playing. And then that has now carried over into his first week in the majors. So, yeah, I think the Nationals, Nationals fans, you know, James Woods fans, James Wood family member, everyone should be extremely ecstatic about what happened over this past couple of weeks. And, you know, the fact that he isn't showing, you know, those kind of struggles like Jackson Holiday did when he first showed up, or even like Wyatt Langford at the top of the, the beginning of the season, he's come around too, but like, you know, he struggled out of the gate the, earlier this year. So, you know, it, it just goes to show that for everyone who was clamoring for James to be promoted, you know, back in May, back in June, that the Nationals did the right thing to keep him down there and keep developing him at the AAA level as long as they did, um, especially after the injury, because now they're kind of reaping the benefits of that where he is hitting the ground running at the major leagues. One of those things with James Wood that I think maybe I've been not so impressed with. Now there's kind of, there, there's a catch here in my opinion, but James Wood in left field. That's been my one thing where I'm like, oh, he's not a left fielder. Now he's a very good defensive outfielder. I mean, Mike Rizzo the other day was on MLB Network and he even said that he believes that he could be a gold glove kind of guy up in center field. So James Wood is playing in left field right now. And he's kind of taking Jesse Winker's spot out and left, which that's what should be happening, by the way. James Wood should be playing every single day here. I'm sure he's going to have a day off here relatively soon. But James Wood, at this point in time, do you think that kind of impacts the way that they're going to attack this trade deadline? Because Lane Thomas right now, you're not really going to put Lane, or you're not going to put him out of right field at this point. That guy was a gold glove finalist in right field. He's been the veteran guy. I don't really see the Nationals kind of just – putting James Wood in right field and then putting Lane Thomas over and left at this point in time. I think they're probably going to give the nod to Lane at this point. But my big overall question is, do you think that has some impact in what they do at the trade deadline? Like, do you think that they could potentially try to move Lane just simply for the best package? Because we do know teams will be calling for Lane, but are you going to move off him just to have James Wood in right field at this point? No, I don't think you do that because I think, like you said, like he hasn't been great. I mean, it's only been 84 innings, and if you look at his advanced metrics in left field, they're all in the negatives, but they're not like 
completely, you know, negative 10 plus or I guess minus whatever. Yeah. Would be. But like, you know, they're not great, but they're also not terrible for eight games, 84 innings out there. So, no, I don't think you're making a trade just so James can play somewhere else in the field. He started playing left field in the minor leagues for this reason. Like, I feel like if they were planning on doing that, he would have been playing at right field more often um, for more consistently uh, at AAA before he came up than, than left field. So, no, I don't think you make a – and, and you know, Mike Rizzo isn't one, and I think probably most GMs are like this, but Mike Rizzo isn't one to just assume that, you know, you're going to trade – so and so at the deadline. I mean, that's still what three weeks from now. So, um, I, I think he's not one to assume that that can just happen. That he can just you know easily make a deal that fits. I mean, he you know he has a really good track record of getting really high value in return for at the trade deadline. Look at what he did with DJ Hers last year, um, and Kevin Mata, who's actually playing pretty well in the minor leagues this year for you know two months of Jamer Candelario at the Cubs. So. You know, he's has a track record of getting pretty good value. So it, it all depends. I think it's not he's not going to trade Lane or, you know, by extension, Hunter or or, or, or Kyle Finnegan just to trade them. Uh, he, you know, it has to be the right package it has to make sense for the organization right now. You know, he needs to get someone who will help, I think, you know, continue to add depth to this minor league system that has sorely lacked it over the past decade plus, or at least since they won the world series. Um, but no, I don't think part of the reason to trade lane would be just to open up a spot for James and Wright. Those are all good points, Bobby. Well, we could talk about James Wood all day here. <laughs> I just wanted to add that one segment just yeah. about James Wood. You're the perfect guy to talk about. And you've been covering the prospects for mass and sports for quite some time now. So glad we got to talk about James Wood, but it's not the only prospects. Brady House, he is in AAA now, Bobby. Dylan Cruz has been there for the last few weeks. He's been doing pretty damn well at this point in time. So when can we see them up in the majors? Bobby, we'll have that for you and all the Locked On Nationals listeners out there. But before we get into it, let me tell you guys about some of our very good friends over at Booking.com. And guys, while summer travel is heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's time to explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. Yes, we're talking about your rival cities. And, of course, this episode of Locked On Nationals is brought to you by Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, and with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rival city. So maybe you're going to Wrigley Field later on this August when the Nationals they head up to Wrigley. You can check booking.com. They can give you all the good deals that you would want. And maybe you're heading up to Boston or New York later this year and you want to go to the game. Just check booking.com. And of course, you can get hotels and look over stadiums and family friendly resorts. Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for you. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. Booking today on booking.com on the site or in the booking.com app. Again, check it out. That is booking.com on the site or in the booking.com app. Now, let me tell you guys about some of our very good friends over at Game Time. And guys, when you're at a game, you just need to go all in on Game Time. And when we do that, it is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with clear last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their lowest price guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And of course, when you do that, I walk up on Half Street and I get the best deals for Nationals games. And when I do that, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find tickets. And of course, my favorite venue is I just love game time. <laughs> And you can find the best zone deals with our friends over at Game Time. And again, the views from their seats, you can see that from your phone. I don't want you guys to miss a thing. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account or redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-MLB for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And now we get back into it with Bobby Blanco from MassInSports.com. Bobby, Brady House, he joins Dylan Cruz at AAA so far. I mean, he's played one game, I believe, or two games actually at this point. 
Brady House is now in AAA. I mean, you now have two of your top prospects. James Wood is already in the majors. Brady House, Dylan Cruz, they are one step away from the major leagues. What do you make so far of Brady House kind of making that jump here in the last few days? Yeah, it was it's just the one game yesterday. He went one for four, so got the hit, two strikeouts. So, you know, not a bad, you know, triple A debut for Brady. Um, kind of saw the writing on the wall right there because the Nationals have been kind of doing this the past couple of years where they kind of just move everybody up one step at a time. So when Trey Lipscomb came up on, I think it was Saturday, to replace Nick Senzel at the major league level, you know, you kind of figure that, all right, Brady, some they need someone to go up and play third base at Rochester – probably going to be Brady house. And sure enough, it was, um, which is exciting, right? Like, you know, I feel like every step of the way over these past couple of years, you've had some combination of James Wood, Robert Hassel, the third Dylan Cruz, Trey Lipscomb, Brady house, you know, maybe throwing a Dale and Lyle there um, playing together at some level of the major leagues as the Nationals continue to progress them up the farm system. So, yeah, no, it's, it's 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 exciting to put some right on the cusp of the majors. Um, you know, the Nationals need a long-term third baseman. Is it going to be Trey Lipscomb? Is it going to be Brady House? Does Trey move to second? Does he become a utility man if Luis Garcia keeps the job? These are all kind of questions that are going to, you know, kind of we're going to keep talking about more and more the closer Brady and, and you know, to, to, you know, for the outfield, Dylan, uh, how closer they get to the major league. So, uh, you know, very exciting for the Nationals organization to get these guys up there that quickly and, and see them performing well um, um, uh, at, at Rochester and, and being able to be that much closer. You know, like with Brady House at this point in time, he went through his struggles in double A. I mean, he was not really himself for quite some time. He did kind of turn that around over the last few weeks here. And I was actually a little bit surprised to see him get thrown up here at AAA, in my opinion. Like, do I think he's ready? I do. I mean, the kid's still young. He has shown a lot. And, and honestly, in my opinion, this is one of my hot takes. I mean, outside of James Wood, obviously. But, like, I would not be surprised if Brady House is the better overall hitter even than Dylan Cruz. And that's not a knock on Dylan Cruz, by the way. I'm just very high on Brady House and his abilities at this point in time. I just think it's going to take a little bit of a longer time for him. Because, again, this is someone who his first year down in Fredericksburg got wiped away with the back injury. Last year, came back, was on fire in Fredericksburg, went to high Wilmington, flew th through that as well. In a very pitcher-friendly ballpark. He made that look like a little puppy game for him. And then in AA last year, he even looked really good as well, in my opinion. He outplayed Dylan Cruz. He even outplayed James Wood for a stretch there. J Robert Hassel is in that equation as well. So now you have two of your top prospects. And Bobby, it kind of brings us to this question here. Like, at this point in time, if Dylan Cruz is impressive, I don't think it's that crazy to think that this guy will be in the major leagues come maybe mid-August at this point. Talk about Dylan specifically? Dylan, yeah, Dylan. Yeah, yeah, no, um, I have tried to map this out as well. I mean, just kind of doing some simple math based on, you know, uh, uh, James's timeline. And, it, of course, it's never fair to, no matter who the prospects are, to, like, compare timelines to timelines. But, you know, it took – James, I think it was a little over 50 games in Rochester this year to get to the major leagues. And, of course, he was tearing it up. You know, he tore up some major league pitching in much spring training as well. Dylan kind of struggled in, in spring training and then um, had a bit of a, a slow start uh, dealing with um, – also, I think it was a hamstring injury earlier this year too. So, But, I mean, that's, I think, a not an unrealistic timeline. Like, I think mm – -hmm. It's it's definitely possible. It shouldn't be the expectation because again, you can't. It's hard. It's, it's not fair to compare two guys. Everyone develops differently. But um, you know, fifty ish games at Rochester for Dylan, I think, does put him at the end of August and like right before Nats homestand. I calculated if he stays healthy and continues to play every day. So that's definitely possible. I think you could see theoretically him up before September. Maybe at maybe at some point during September, but I also say you know I caution fans of saying that setting that expectation because it also isn't the worst thing in the world if he doesn't come up until next you year. You know, no, that that is true because like James Wood flew his way through. I mean, right. obviously the guy was killing the baseball; he was ready to make the jump. But Dylan Cruz is kind of one of those guys where I was expecting him to be in the majors actually at this time, and I even said last year that. 
I wouldn't have been surprised if Dylan Cruz made it to the bigs even before James Wood. Uh -huh. Now we kind of see this now and, you know, he hasn't been great, but he hasn't really been bad either. He did have that bad stretch early on in double A Harrisburg, but ultimately at the end of the day, I, I think Dylan Cruz is going to be an all-star kind of guy. Nobody should be really be worried about his production so far. Like it hasn't been overwhelmingly good, but it has also hasn't been bad either. I mean, he's just yeah. been a tick above average really at every stop so far, but Dylan Cruz at this point in time, like, I think if the Nationals, I don't think it's that crazy to throw him up in the majors and just kind of rush him, quote unquote. Now, is that what they're going to do? I don't know. But with Brady House, looking at him right now, I think he's going to be one of those guys where you could potentially see him up for like a week or two, kind of similar to what they did with Victor Robles back in like 2017, kind of bring him up for a few weeks, last two weeks of the season, seeing what the kid can do, and then having him start the year in the minors again. But what do you kind of see there? Like, where do you see Brady House kind of fitting into making that jump to the majors? Well, first and foremost, he has to earn it, right? Mm -hmm. Mike Orizzo always says that, and same with Davey. Like, they have to kind of earn their way up. They, they're not going to just bring him up. As much as fans would like them to do this, they have never really done this in the past, and I don't foresee them doing it with these top prospects that are such important pieces of the future, but they're not just going to bring them up for the sake of bringing them up uh you know to kind of show off to the fan base they don't like doing that so i don't think they're going to do that so first and foremost brady has to earn you know a quick stint in the majors before the season ends in order to do that but the other thing is it's interesting when you're talking about these two guys brady and dylan coming up at some point this year you know trey lipsicum i know he's only been back for like five days now but he is you know he's got to prove that he can handle major league pitching over these next couple of weeks, month plus. Um, and he deserves to be that everyday third baseman moving forward or for at least the rest of this year. Um, so that kind of, I, I think the way Trey and I'm a Trey Lipscomb guy, you know, this mm -hmm. guy I've, I've loved. Yeah. This kid since You've been on him. Yeah. He, got, he was drafted. Um, and I think he still can play an important part for this team's future. It just might not be as the everyday third baseman because you have Brady House coming up. So, but so the way that Trey has played, and not to his complete fault because he's been shuttled back and forth a couple of times from the majors to the minors, but he has not proven, not yet, that he can be that everyday guy just yet. Now, he's got some time right now. Like when the Nationals parted ways with Nick Senzel and brought him up, that was them saying, All right, we're giving you the job right now. Let's see what you can do over these next couple of weeks, month plus. Um, it's different with Dylan because obviously they want Dylan to play center field and Jacob Young is the best defensive center fielder in the major leagues right now. So you're not that, that door isn't quite as open for Dylan as third base is for Brady. Does that make sense? Like, Oh yeah. Like I, I can see them bringing up Brady because Trey has been struggling um, and giving Brady a chance. I don't really see them bringing up, I, Dylan's, I think, different because he is the number two pick from last year. And, you know, once James graduates, number one prospect. But there's no, there's not going to be a need for Dylan to come up this year the way that Jacob Young has been playing. There might be a need for Brady House to come up at some point this year because Trey Lipscomb may not be cutting it at third base. Mm -hmm. is, is that kind of, does that kind of make sense? No, that absolutely does make sense because, you know, Trey Lipscomb has been impressive. I think defensively, we all saw it. I mean, last week, I mean, really, over the last few games here, he's made some incredible plays we haven't seen since Anthony Rendon back right. in 2017 through 2019, where the guy was just a premier third baseman, solid with the glove, made all the routine plays, and even more than that. So I think you all brought up great points there. Uh, it'd be cool to see Brady House at this point in time, but I just don't know if we'll be able to get to see that at this point. But, Bobby, let's talk about the draft real quick. Let's preview yeah. today's game real quick. Before we get into it, let me tell you guys about our very good friends over at Prize Picks. And guys, when we talk about Prize Picks, you all know the drill. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million <laughs> active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. And all you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community today and of course you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars 
into one thousand dollars and prize picks is available in more than 30 states across the country including california texas and of course my home state virginia and as well as georgia so when you talk about prize picks you need to know that it is fun and you have player stat types that reach your selection and of course you go higher or less on stat projections and of course when you do that Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now we get back into it with Bobby Blanco from MassInSports.com. Bobby, the draft is coming up this Sunday. What do you foresee from the Washington Nationals at this point? Oh, man, you know what? With so much happening over the past week, I got to be completely honest, I have not tuned into much of the draft. And now, I am also different, but like, for a guy who loves covering prospects in baseball, I really hate the draft because yeah. it, gets into, it, gets, it cuts into our all-star break. Like, there are reporters who say yes. all-star break, too. <laughs> you know, and we can take a couple of days off, maybe go down to the beach, hang out, have a couple of cocktails on the sand. Nope, can't do that. Where you just Damn. have to... <laughs> we have a day on a Sunday, and then you know a ten-hour day on a Monday and Tuesday, and then we get two days off, and then we're right back at it. So whatever. That's just <laughs> wait. I kind of want to double click on that because people out there, you say you want to cover baseball, All Star break, not for the media anymore. You don't you get, get the anymore. MLB draft. You get the All Star game as well. And if you're the Nationals, you've got your guy C.J. Abrams there. I mean, Bobby, you're going to be covering it, I'm sure, right? <laughs> I mean, I, gotta, I mean, thank. Thank goodness they don't have anyone in the home run derby. You oh know, my like, god! That one year, two years ago, or yeah, was it two years ago when you know they first started kind of doing the draft on that Sunday night. Yeah, and, and Juan Soto, of course, won the home run derby and then started oh. the All Star game. And it was like, it was like the most stressful uh, All Star break ever. Oh, <laughs> I know. So I bet. The All Star game was here in DC. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It is ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But at this point in time, I mean, as far as the Nationals go, people have been asking. They've been. I've seen the comment section on YouTube. People are like, what are they going to do? And at yeah. this point in time, you can't really – like nobody knows. Nobody knows how this draft will fall. I mean, again, like there is some premier talent in the top 10. They hold the number 10 overall pick in this year's draft. But, yeah. I mean, people are like, what are we going to do? We're going to go a college bat. We're going to go college arm. Are you going to go a prepster? Yeah. Here's the thing we know about Mike Rizzo. He's going to take the best player available. Yeah. Whoever's the best player available, whoever he sees the highest ceiling, it doesn't matter their timeline. It doesn't matter how big of a project. Mike Rizzo is going to point his bat, point towards center field, and try to hit a 450-foot bomb. That's what he does in the draft. But even maybe with this new kind of development staff, you could see something a little bit different in my opinion. But I don't know. We'll just have to see if they attack it a little differently this year. Yeah, you have to keep in mind that this is the first draft for the new scouting department, the new development department. I mean, I don't know how much they'll have a say in the draft. That's Eddie Longo's, mm -hmm. but like the draft, Danny Hass uh, and Brad Sciolic. Uh, Sciolic came in, coming over from the Orioles draft yeah. room. So that's going to be interesting to see how they kind of attack this number 10 overall pick. That is probably for me. For me. I understand there's people out there who like the draft. That's probably the only interesting thing about this draft for me for when it comes to the Nationals is how this new developmental scouting department attacks it. Because you're right, they do have the 10th pick. That's not as exciting as the number two pick last no. year. There aren't, a, there isn't really a Paul Skeens and a Dylan Cruz one, two at the top. I mean, there's some elite college bats. We can kind of guess who's going to go to the top three, but there's no like sure fryer prospect that's going to be the next one of these two guys, I don't think. And it's not like, we just saw the Commanders pick two and the Wizards pick two. And the baseball draft is different than those drafts where it's not like the Nats can trade up and get somebody else. They're stuck at 10, and then they, you know, go pick the other 20 rounds. So it's, for me, not as interesting as, you know, the past couple of years when they've picked higher. But obviously they're still going to get a top 10, you know, cop, or top 10 draft prospect in this selection. And I'm really curious to see how this new scouting department kind of attacks – tax to draft bobby it's always a pleasure we're gonna preview nats mets here but we kind of got lost on talking about your all-star break quote unquote yeah. but also, on the mound that's all you need to know <laughs> I, was, I was gonna make a joke there i was like patrick corman's on the mound today city field against a bunch of right-handed hitters <laughs> i mean 
You want, you want me to make a prediction for the for the Mets? They he shut him out uh, one run over eight innings the last time we faced them. So yes, yeah. <laughs> revenge game maybe. Exactly, maybe it's a revenge game. Maybe Patty Cake goes out there seven innings, one earned run, but I think we know. What I'm not saying happen. don't tune in. I'm just saying, of course, tune in, tune into Masson's. I mean, the get you guys are covering the game today. You guys yeah. all do a great job. Bobby's up there. Make sure to catch Bobby over on Twitter at Bobby underscore Blanco. And of course, Bobby, always appreciate the time, man. And despite how much I hate the draft, please tune into our draft coverage on Mass and All <laughs> Access on Sunday night. We will be covering uh, the Nats pick live on all of our social channels, and it also air on Mass at some point. So you will catch. That too. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bobby, you have a good one, man. And uh, Nationals fans, enjoy the game today. Maybe Patty Cakes gets a win. We'll catch you on the flip side.